All right, good morning, good morning, Rise and Shine Sanitation Safety Team. I hope all is well. Welcome to the basically on the job training we call number two, part two. Be able to apply what you just learned from week two, content area, chapters two and three. Now into your residential, personal lives, socially, downstairs in labs, academically, and professionally as well. All right, we're going to focus in on chapter two first here in this video. Looking at the microbial world again, all right, what you can't see with an, even with glasses, with your naked eye, all the bacteria, all the viruses, parasites, and fungi of the world. Now, of those four, I just rattled off right there. Remember, on the quiz and on the exam later, I'm going to say, hey, which one of those four is the most prevalent that we need to be very truly concerned about in our basic society today is viruses. Why, professor? We spread it so easily with 1A, 1B. Right here, we're the common denominator. Viruses basically to what? People to people, people to food contact surfaces, or people to the food itself. We prep with these, or we consume with these. These are everywhere and anywhere. We put them anywhere and everywhere on our bodies and not basically wash our hands properly after we do so. All right, now, getting into bacteria. How do you control and prevent that, Professor? Time, temperature abuse. Controlling that basic danger zone. Meaning what? Cold food, cold, 41 degrees or below. Frozen food, frozen, 32 degrees above, or hot food, hot 135 or above. You got to know in that basically, to me, 41 to 135, that danger zone, everything in the middle there, that's that common room basically temperature or outside temperature food. You got to be careful. You got to be cautious with it, making sure, all right, when, when you basically digest that food, that's the food that could really get you susceptible to having any one of those symptoms that we talked about, any one of those bacteria that could basically you know, get into your digestive tract and cause some havoc. How to prevent it? Cold food, cold, hot food. If I had any room left on basically my body, would think I'd probably get my next tattoo. Is that <laughs> I preach that going to again? That's going to be in week two now, all the way to week eight. Cold food, cold, hot food, hot. All right, now getting into basic, you know, to me, parasites. Very, 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 very rare. All right, but nonetheless, all right, you've got to know how to prevent and basically control them. How and why fresh we buy from reputable suppliers. So you might be a fisherman. You might go out on your boat. Or you go off the dock. All right, but those fishermen have a license and permit to do so to sell something as always commercially. They have to test the water and they have to test the soil. Why, Professor? To make sure the water and soil that they basically harvest as always, again, whatever basically they're you know, fishing for, or as always, sometimes oyster may be, especially. And again, you got to be careful, you got to be cautious. Everything needs to be legit there all right, and done so in a sanitary and safe way. All right, and that's where you got to be careful, you got to be cautious, especially when you love my, su my sushi lovers. Whenever you want to go somewhere and eat something raw like that or oysters on the half shell. Uh, you got to know, do your recon, do your homework, and on the job training protocol number one, look at that website, are all the restaurants that you might want to go to, do your homework on, listen, any type of basic violation or any fine or, or any basic to me disturbance and then where I'm going to go eat somewhere that's going to eat something raw that I need to be concerned about. Be careful, be cautious that protect, protect, protect. When you know you're going to eat something raw, go to some place that you fully trust that they're going to provide you a sanitary and safe basically food item. All right, now fungi, just be careful. It's the plant toxins. It's the seafood toxins. Uh, that are out there, you just got to know. All right, when you basically find yourself in those realm of things, know is always in particular the toxin can't be seen, can't be tasted, can't be again. Anything of that nature can be cooked, can't be burnt out, can be frozen out. They're always there, natural occurring, basically moments, unfortunately. So that's when you got to know who you buy from, make sure they're reputable, make sure everything's done in a sanitary and safe way. All right, also the word of the week for chapter two is water. Now, we're very blessed and very fortunate in our country today. We have potable water in pretty much any and everywhere spigot that you go or faucet. All right. And that's why, again, that potable or potable water uh, can be utilized to wash your hands correctly, prep with, bathe with, consume. I could go on and on. Not every place you go. Third world countries. All right. It's somehow, someone you got to know when you get down to certain places in Mexico or as well as the Punta Canas of the world, the Caribbean islands of the world. And anywhere that you might go, you got to know the water there. All right, it's not treated, it's not basically taken care of, as is here in America. All right, and that's where we go. It's not just the water, but it's also the ice. Ice is what it gets everybody. How why? You might want to go down to this always in Punta Cana and get a pina colada all right, when you go off the reservation. Just be careful, all right, cautious. Even though there's alcohol in it, all right, the ice that's in that pina colada, that can get sick, it can be contaminated and get as always your digestive tract and cause some issues. So water, water, water. Also, all right, when I get into is always sometimes I go to someone's house and they have a reclaimed water or they might have reclaimed water in a farm somewhere. Reclaimed water is water that you basically recycle from basically where it rains, gets into the ground, then you recycle and utilize it in a sprinkler system in someone's backyard for a garden or something I was getting a farm is always in their crops in certain basic quadrants on that farm. You just got to, you got to be careful, you got to be cautious. On a farm, there's a lot of animals. Animals do their business in the ground. 
all right? I don't want to talk about physically or get too graphic there, but their business sometimes again, water goes into the ground, all right? All those basic forcing moments, their feces, everything else is absorbed in the ground and they're utilizing that water again. That's how that plays out. You want to use reclaimed water at home. Be careful, be cautious. I love that you're going to be Captain Planet and save the world and be eco-friendly. All right, but I see a lot of times they want to keep this, you know, sometimes again, the gutter system, the water falls from the rain onto the roof, into the barrel. Now we're using the water in that barrel in our gardens. Be careful, be cautious, team. All right, I don't mind if you use it for your grass or for as always flowers, but when used for crops that you get a chance to utilize for as always food purposes, you got to know, test the water, test the water. Just make sure it's done so in a sanitary and safe way. All right, watch that video on chapter two, my visual learners for Dr. Cecilia. She takes you through the whole process of someone coming into the hospital with a foodborne illness. How that chain of basically, uh, to me, of command goes. All right, if someone is basically diagnosed with a foodborne illness. First and foremost, how are they diagnosed, professor? Well, again, two ways they can only basically diagnose you. They can't say, oh, you got a foodborne illness. No. All right, they look at your blood sample and they look at your stool sample. Stool sample, I don't want to get too graphic there, but that's how that plays out. They test that. They look under microscope, microbiology-wise, uh, and see if it's a different strain of virus, parasite, or bacteria. Then they, again, if it's a confirmed case, they go right to, as always, again, the health department or their local basic health department working this here in Volusia County. Uh, they let them know we have a confirmed case of such and such bacteria or virus, and that's when the local health department gets the basic, unfortunate ground running on that basically case. Because, again, we learned in Chapter 1, two or more basically people, same food, same restaurant, there's your food boy known as Albert right there. You've got to be careful. You've got to be cautious on that. So that's your Chapter 2, uh, as always, again, applying it in all your personal, uh, professional all right, residential social livelihoods. Chapter three, all right, be careful, be cautious here. Allergens, all right, new food. When you get down to the labs, baking students, beverage science students, culinary students, you're going to consume new food. All right, so that, again, to me, how I press, you're gonna try octopus, you're gonna try eel. All right, you're gonna have so many different variations of new food. All right, food that you never had basically, to me, in contact with consumed. So my recommendation to you is, because it's new, remember this video, remember me, hopefully as always, <laughs> providing you guidance, when you have something to do, I want you to try it, all right? Have at it, but, all right, try it first, all right, in a small bite, all right? Take a spoonful of something or a fork of something. Put that fork or spoon down. Wait two to three minutes. Your body from those two to three minutes will let you know, hey, we're good to go. Have at it, enjoy it, or you might get a little basically to me, all right, potentiality, all right, closed throat. We talked about, again, the symptoms of our allergic reaction, or a little swelling in the throat, or a little itchiness, a little redness, all right? Benadryl, we can basically counterbalance that, and you're good to go. But if you have all basically that eel, all basically that shark you're going to have, all of basically to be something like those octopus, and you have basically allergic reaction in a maximal way instead of a minimal way, there's your anaphylactic shock potentiality. And now we got to use an EpiPen on you. So be careful, be cautious that we try new food. All right, remember physical contaminants, eyes on the prize before any dish bowl go out there or anything for your solar service area. Make sure there's no physical contaminants. How I, Professor, that's when someone can choke on it. And more likely, again, that's how you get some negative media. How why everybody's got a phone. Hey, look what's basically attached to my sandwich or in my bowl. You never want that ne negative media exposure. Same thing with chemicals, guys. Be careful with chemical contamination. Stainless steel is always the way to go. All right, in our home lives, be careful of the wear and tear and the durability of our pots and pans. All right, when something acidic is cooked in those basically non-durable pots and pans, all right, the metal or lead that can leach into that basically is always acidic food. Get your digestive tract. There's your adverse reaction there. Remember alert. All right, deliberate contamination is intentional contamination. All right, alert that provides us opportunities, all right, defense mechanisms. All right, more likely again, the alert, just like Fat Tomic basically has a you know, to me acronym for it. Remember the L. Look, always know who's in your option and why they're there. Front of the house, back of the house team. All right, be mindful, cautious, all right? Apply what you learn. Enjoy, there's always, again, these on-the-job training protocols, but get out there, make a difference, impact others as well, all right? Teach others what you learn from this class. There's that multiplier effect in a positive way that we go right the tides and bring everybody to safety, sanitation, and safety, all right, that front burner, instead of always being on the back burner. All right, I wish you all the best, health, happiness, success. All right, take care, team. Have a great week.